Good morning. Good morning. There you are, bro. How are you? I'm good, bro. Here we go. Yes. See, I'm trying to. I I just told him I lost my tripod. It seems like so. I have it. It's a coffee box and a creatine, uh, uh, <laughs> whatever you call them, bottle. So I'm hoping this is stable though. So uh, yes, I'm live with my good friend Sim, Sim Van Dale, uh, mm -hmm. from. Uh, Antwerp in Belgium, right? So tell me, oh, yeah. how are things now? How, how, what does your day look like? Uh, the days kind of look uh, very similar, most of them. Like wake up relatively early, not, not as early as you. Um, mm -hmm. Then bike to the gym, train, come back, eat some liver and uh, work, and then maybe go back to the gym and like coach some people. And, and that's kind of it. Nice. Yeah, no, that's good too, but I, I kind of, I guess I'm asking, what's the weather like? You know, a Swedish oh. question. <laughs> oh, bro, the weather, uh, like it's been like a stereotypical Belgian weather, like overcast and rainy. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. we've had a really good summer, so now it's uh, catching up to us that um, mm -hmm. like the Belgian weather has to commence, right? Yeah, I think it's similar to here um, because like the day before yesterday, it rained like crazy. And yesterday was this kind of schizophrenic weather where it was like cloudy, sun, cloudy, sun, cloudy, sun. <laughs> but, you know, I'll take it. It was good. So Sam and I, today we just um, wanted to have a little conversation about, um, well, I was thinking the nervous system mm. has less anti-fragility because those are some things that you specialize in right so mm -hmm. like before we get into that uh, i have not prepared a whole lot because sim and me uh, know each other well so i'm sure we'll get i have a few questions in mind but mm -hmm. so just for the people watching right now just tell tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do so um i'm a high performance coach i tend to help people in high performing jobs uh, with so stress regulation, as Theo kind of points out, with the nervous system, but it, it's more like this whole, um, yeah, increasing their performance through lifestyle and stress management and philosophy and psychology. So it's this whole thing that tackles everything, and then we just kind of you know coach them through that until they they they're educated enough to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And so this time, because we had a podcast this summer and there were specifically these things that you coach about, well, stress tolerance and that, that we didn't really have. We talked for two and a half hours. <laughs> so that, that's kind of the add on that I like to get uh, today. But so I, I'd like to, for the audience, ask you a very simple question first that I asked you for myself personally recently, like the nervous system. What is it? Yeah. So the nervous system um outside of it like be effectively being a bundle of nerves right so a lot yeah. of people like it, it, it's it's um it's quite vague right so like the nervous system has a lot of elements to it so it, it, it it's not just that it's a bundle of nerves and like oh that's it like you feel stuff like yeah that's that's a big part of it right so the the central nervous system the brain is basically encased in our skull it's like just a blob in a black box, right? If it mm. didn't have these nerves running out like as roots, like a plant, right? Like going into the soil, it wouldn't be able to um, take up three things from its environment or sense its environment, right? So in the first order, the nervous system is there as our connection to the outside world um, as we go into this. And in the second order, it's there to um, well, perpetuate or, or, or move or us forwards in survival, right? Or so survival and thriving so that we could live. Um, the nervous system, um, it has two branches. And when we think about like stress and anti-fragility, I mean, all of them are important, but these are the, the, the most applicable ones for what we're going to get into. It's the, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Right. And the sympathetic is the quick reaction system. So like if you don't remember the, the terms, it doesn't matter that much. It's just about like, okay, the sympathetic is quick reaction, right? Rather safe than sorry. The parasympathetic mm. is slow acting, right? So it's anything that has to do with the slow acting systems in the body. Um, 
And it, these nerves, um, so that, that's good to point out, right? These nerves and the neurons in them, they, they can degrade with stress or they can upgrade, right? When we start being able to work um, around stress and other physiological elements that, that have to do with it. So that's the, the hardware component drives the software component the software being states, which we're going to get into. And then mm -hmm. the software component also plays on the hardware component, right? It's, it's, it's always both like they work in a bi-directional fashion. So that that's the, the nervous system in a nutshell. Mm. Perfect. So, um, yeah, I just want the viewer who isn't as well read or whatever uh, up to speed on this to think mm. about it, because I have my uncommon sense approach, right? That I, I figure out just a lot of things by experience. I observe myself and I think. And mm. so what my really what I know about the nervous system really is mainly the parasympathetic and sympathetic component. Mm. Like and it, it's basically a spectrum how much of each is yeah. activated right so i just want the person listening to this to think about you can know so much about the nervous system just from your experience when you know this that we have two main kind of modes like mm -hmm. that you, you can kind of know it's like oh i'm feeling a bit sympathetic right now yeah my you know my heart rate is a bit elevated i'm like this oh probably mm -hmm. it was because i did this so i dr drank more coffee uh, or whatever mm -hmm. it was you know mm -hmm. same thing when you're feeling all oh, like oh you know, I'm not necessarily feeling bad, but I'm, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just slow. I'm not always like this, you know, for but, some reason, uh, your parasympathetic nervous system is more active than right. So mm -hmm. what, what I wanted to ask you is, um, you know, I try to get you to talk about the right thing in a way, you know, and it's that <laughs> when can the nervous system become a problem for someone or when can they have problems with the nervous system? Like what would cause that mm -hmm. and what issues could people get? So, I mean, there's, there's different avenues, right? The things start early on. <laughs> so that's always the first thing. Like if you have had a, a, a rough childhood, a bad childhood, whatever, um, mm. then that is building your nervous system in either direction, right? If some people like were in situations where they were stuck, then they're going to trend far more on the, the parasympathetic side mm -hmm. where they're, um, let's say like yeah you can use the word depressed right it's energy conserving like if you're stuck in a situation that you can't get out of the body's going to try to like stop the energy expenditure right in order mm -hmm. to save itself yeah and it, the the other thing is that like depending on the type of situation because it, it's always about like survival right if you're constantly in survival mode then you go into these like different you know fight flight and freeze and, and that's a lot where the, the bio-individual tolerances and set points, if you will, so tolerance, like how much stress you can tolerate and where you trend on the spectrum is going to be built. And then there's, you know, always the additional factors, like nutrition is one of them, right? Like if you're already stressed from childhood onwards, then it doesn't make certain things like your social environment, your work environment, right? Um, any easier necessarily but it's a harder to uh, navigate for people that that come from a, a background right like that um mm. so yeah like the, the, that's initially right that's where the nervous system is being built in your childhood so if that's already like a thing right that where there was a lot of stress and a lot of survival then that's gonna influence the nervous system in in, in either direction right Hundred mm, percent. Mm. But I'm also thinking of like people that uh, you coach, for instance. Mm. Like when they come to you and they have, they they say, "I have some kind of problem that you apparently can help with." You know, mm. like what kinds of problems is it that they are experiencing in their lives? So typically, these guys like they come to a point where. Um, their focus is off their their motivation is gone like so the, the very little what was left of the passion at some point and that they're just yeah like they, that they've come so far that they can't really cope with the stress anymore right so um most of them have experienced some type of burning out right also again exists on the spectrum so in in the interesting thing is that like you can also burnout on both ends so you can have mm -hmm. a parasympathetic burnout and you can have a sympathetic burnout or you can have both um mm -hmm. which which is you know more intense um so that, you mean you can have both at the same time 
Yeah, yeah. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, like um, autodysnomia is what it's called, or dysautonomia. I think I'm mixing it up. So that's when the entire nervous system, both branches, are just completely fried out. <laughs> well, so, like I'm interested to think, I'm trying to think what that would look like, because mm -hmm. what I've been able to tell, and I know mm -hmm. about myself before I got into this lifestyle, that I think my main issue was just that I spent too, way too much time in the sympathetic mode mm -hmm. and just didn't mm -hmm. get enough recovery time. And But when that finally happened, I always felt like, ah, <laughs> you know. So I'm yeah. just thinking what, what happens when that doesn't really work well either. Um, well, it's basically where they're um you know it's almost like a vegetative state like you can't really do anything uh, typically it comes with like a, a lack of drive like it, it's depression but without the necessarily like um what is it like when you're i mean depression again it's also very individual so mm. um, i'm using it as a, a very large term here but that these yeah. types of people when they're you know burned out on, on both branches like it's whatever I'll put it like this their sympathetic is so fried that like if they have coffee coffee they would start like hyperventilating so they would go mm -hmm. very easily into anxiety even though that they're super low on energy right so mm -hmm. technically it doesn't make sense because anxiety is high energy and and you know being depressed is low energy but yeah it's, yeah it's because the nervous system is so uh, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to be honest, this this reminds me still a bit about me well, before I went into the whole uh, panic attack thing, because that mm. was the thing. I was so under recovered, you know, mm. uh, like, like constantly sleeping too little. Uh, mm. And when I sleep, I just pass out, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you know, you're at that point, really. Mm. But then you keep yourself going with like stimulants and always mm. chasing these late nights with drinking and stuff. Yeah. But I remember just because you said, I remember that. Um, when I was already into having these panic attacks, I mm. once when I drank coffee, it mm. triggered a panic attack. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I felt like it was part the actual physical effect, but just the association. You know, mm. I feel my heart rate elevated. Ah, yes. the hotness. Yes, you know, and exactly. In that loop, in that pattern again. You know. Mm. Um, Mm, interesting. So the, the the kind of people that uh, you work with, like like. Um, you basically, you know, it's like their, their lifestyle, the stress catches up to them, you said, and they can't really deal with it anymore. So, yeah. like some kind of overall protocol, it's of course going to depend on the person. But what would mm -hmm. be the steps a person like that can be to be able to tolerate stress better and recover better? So, <laughs> you point out one thing already, right? Sleep is such mm -hmm. a big factor. It's the first thing that people cut. Um, yeah. It, it's probably the most illogical thing in the world, right? It's it's our only state of recovery. So when people it's are like, oh. boredom, man. It, it's <laughs> it's much more fun to not go to sleep. Most people think, you know. Yeah. Well, like we don't we don't sleep for fun, right? We sleep for no. necessity. <laughs> it sure makes uh, the waking time a lot more fun when you sleep well. Yeah, exactly. Right. So sleeping is a uh, good morning, Joachim. Nice to have you yeah, here. Good morning. Um, the um, so sleep, right? So back to that, like that's the, when I talked about like the neurons degrading, right? Through stress, sleep is actually the thing that heals everything, right? So if from the nerve, the nerve itself physically to the neurons in the nerves, um, to, to every other system, right? So the, the first step with all of them is always like, okay, we need to look at your sleep and we need to fix that first. Mm. Because otherwise you can't recover, right? As, as mm -hmm. you pointed out, and like you see that, like everyone knows that, like if you are sleep deprived for a few days, like your tolerance to everything, it just decreases. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it reduces blood flow in the brain and stuff like that, right? So there's a lot of different components. It hits a lot of different levels. The next step is also um, breath, right? A lot of these have... Um, breeding patterns that are stress breeding patterns that they take into their quote unquote resting times, mm -hmm. right? So even when they're at rest, right? And I'm, I'm using quotes because they're not actually resting because they're still stressed and they're breeding in a stressed fashion. 
Mm. So it's like, well, I mean, you're that, now is the time you're supposed to be resting, but your nervous system gets the signal like I'm still under stress, right? I'm still mm -hmm. in a in a, a survival situation. Um, it's and, a kind of shallow breathing, I guess. Like, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So high frequency, it tends to be with the mouth, tends to be very high and relatively shallow, right? So if you if you sprinted right sometime in your life or mm -hmm. had a hard exercise and you start like panting, right, that's kind of like indicative of um, stress breathing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it serves a function for for exercise, obviously, right? Yeah. But it's it, it, it's we want to move out of that once you come back into recovery. It's, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I want you to go on, but the quick note there is like all of this has a function at the right time. It's yeah. like when it gets when the things activate when they shouldn't, or if something has been too active or too not active enough, you know. <laughs> so obviously everything is there to serve us to begin with. Then yeah. trauma uh, changes that, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then nutrition is also a really big part of it. Certain mm -hmm. things, it is, this also has to do with individual um, thresholds, right? So that, that activates or, or, or downplays something. Um, so it's important for them, as you already pointed out, right? Like to be very mindful of stimulants, to be very mindful of, of, of other things that they're eating, right? So certain people um, have a very upregulating um, effect of carbs, right? So if they eat too much carbs, it's a, so in the nervous system, because of how energy systems work, the carbs upregulate you, right? I mean, most people mm -hmm. understand that, like if you take some like honey, right? A few spoons, it's like, oh, there's like these available energy all of a sudden, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's, uh, that's, that's a fake typo. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's what does the um, makes this connection to the sympathetic. Like, if mm -hmm. I need quick energy and sugar is quick energy, it's a bi-directional. Like, I take you know x amounts of sugar that activates my uh, sympathetic nervous system, right? Like, it tells me like, oh, I'm getting in this energy. Maybe there's something in my environment that I need to go crush, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 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 using this quick energy system. Um, I have a quick question there. Uh, yeah. I, I discussed it with a friend recently, you know, about um, digestion, that it kind of speeds up a bit if you move after you've eaten. Mm -hmm. I, I've been thinking, is that kind of, um, you know, that, that the body will, depending on what you do after you eat, like make a decision, kind of like, okay, apparently we're still about to move. Let's mm -hmm. digest quicker, you know, and like go into more, more like that. Yeah. Or if you, just, if you just have a meal and just sit around, you're probably going to... Mm, start getting that kind of little feeling you know so just mm. a thought that. <laughs> well it, it has a lot to do with like the individual digestive um capabilities someone that that's not as good as digesting because of you know stress influencing the metabolism right it, like on the liver the gallbladder stomach acidity and stuff like that uh, through the vagus nerve, actually, then it, even if they would go for a walk, it wouldn't necessarily speed up their digestion. It's if if you're if that it's a very good walk and it's like very parasympathetic, right? Parasympathetic is what drives digestion. So movement in and of itself, and and the, this is intensities as well, right? Would shut digestion down because like when you're moving, all your blood needs to go to the extremities, mm -hmm. right? So there's it's it's kind of the nuance again right it's never really sure. one thing like for yeah. some it could be beneficial other people would probably have to take it easy instead of going for a walk right because it, it kind of interrupts the digestive process of doing the, the thing it needs to do so yeah it, it's it's gonna depend on the person in in, in that case as well yeah, i thought about that too because mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense um you know, when you've eaten, you probably want to chill and digest it a bit. And mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really know how that works because I've heard a lot of people mm -hmm. say that they feel better when they go on a little walk uh, after mm -hmm. a meal. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's not. It doesn't seem like oh, you know, uh, you you have to move when you e eat yeah, to yeah. digest. It doesn't make sense, really. No, like, in, I mean, of course, like your body can digest like when it's moving, but it's. Again, like if, if you have a poor digestive system, you're sending resources to other places now. The the blood and the resources are supposed to be in the gut so it can just do the digestive process. But if you're a really like if your digestive process is really good and you've had a meal, then you can go for a walk, right? So it's I know it's like 
promoted by uh, people in the industry, you know, at the top. And it's like, yeah, again, like it could have some benefits, but well, Joachim is pointing out that it could help the movement in the gut. So that could be yeah, definitely true. be a factor yeah. in there, right? So that's that's a good point. So, yeah. um, no, but yeah. if, if you go, it, so um, I interrupted with little questions there, but mm. so we, we talked about how to, you know, mitigate stress and uh, mm. get on top of your nervous system, basically. So we've gone through mm. sleep as the, like the main main thing, yeah. recovery. We talked about breathing and mm -hmm. nutrition. There. Um, so what else? Well, interestingly enough, right, movement in general. So for people um, that have a, this, the, the sympathetic, like, as I said, it's a spectrum, right? And we kind of want to come to a point where you're creating a balance between the parasympathetic and the sympathetic, right? And that's already where we're starting with, like, tolerance. If I'm, if I'm staying away from the sympathetic, even though like, yeah, you know, I'm stressed and stuff like that at work, but you never go into building that range, right? Um, effectively through movement, right? Because it's a controlled environment. Then I'm, 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 how do you put that? I'm, I'm imbalanced, right? If my parasympathetic is like I'm this big and my sympathetic is this big, then there's, there's no balance in that arch as we could call it. So actually movement, right? It's a stressor if you strength train anyway, or do like heavy, heavy exercises, intense stuff. But it's seeing that it's in a controlled environment and most of the time you do it willingly, right? You put yourself into that position where you can navigate that type of stress. Um, and it's also interesting that like afterwards, right, with the hormonal releases, it makes you feel better, even though it's a stressor. And there's the individual again, like, okay, if you have a very stressful life and you're gonna do very, like, if you're trying to PR every day in the gym, that's going to be too much, right? Then yeah. you're not building any stress tolerance, then you're just kind of furthering the dysfunction of the nervous system. So finding a balance with movement and the type of movement you enjoy um, is very important, right? And again, like thinking full spectrum, it's like, okay, let's not just go like hyper intense. Let's do some yoga. Let's do some uh, tai chi. Let's do some mobility, flexibility type things in there as well, right? And, and then you're again, working on both ends of the nervous system uh, just by with movement alone, actually. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. So these are these are all. It's funny <laughs> because so many questions I get, like how they, people ask me about my skin, my hair, whatever, and, and like the answer is always the same. It's kind of like sleep well, eat well, move, get the sunlight, you know. But yes. um, there are, of course, like never mind the skin and hair. But th there are things outside of these. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like to answer all the questions like that because it kind of hammers in that whatever your problem is, it will get better with these. Um, fundamentals right but so on top of this if we're little extra tools to use what, what do we have there uh well extra like cold exposure is one that of course helps right uh again it, it depends on where people are on their spectrum individually with stress tolerance um mm. and, and the state of their nervous system it's one of them as a tool that if I've used with all my clients, right? So I've lived in Oslo for, for seven years. I've, I've coached clients there. We went swimming every week in the winter. And that practice was one of the more fascinating ones because, yeah, the uh, what is it like in movement, like you could just kind of stop at any time and there's no issue, right? Like I can drop the bar and I can stop and I can rest when you're in cold water it really changes the thing like it, just because you left the cold water doesn't mean you're warm right it's not over uh, so there's a lot of like psychological and physiological stuff at work because it's funny when i started coaching people in this or using that tool it, they actually start building mental resistance right just by the very fact that you're going to do this so they're already yeah. stressing themselves out Right. Yeah, yeah. And they, this is it, very funny. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, they just made me think of something. I want to ask more about the cold. But yes. um, a, a, a client recently, um, my, my coach, uh, coaching has gone a direction I didn't expect necessarily. Mm -hmm. But um, it, I, we found that he is in kind of a shutdown mode. He is yeah. way too parasympathetic. He's, mm -hmm. he's often just very, very calm, not necessarily depressed, but he knows that he has 
just less he's less than he should be and then yeah. i talk to him some sometimes when uh, uh, just, i just see the lad there more more mm -hmm. smiling going on and, stuff. and so i figured like yeah he's overly in the parasympathetic how can i get mm -hmm. him out of it? and when mm -hmm. i brought up as an idea of a thing for him so i want him to face fears because fear yeah. is the best activator of the sympathetic nervous system really or like yes. the most reliable one in a sense mm. you know and, yeah. and so i threw at him that i want you to approach a strange woman each day and mm. for the next day we have our next call you know and mm. immediately when i told him this he was like <laughs> you know like because this is a big one for him you know yeah, it's a big yeah. one it's a scary thing to do um but uh he also he he was he was like like instinctively I, everything in my being wants to say no 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 but i also understand that you're right and from this point in our call he was also more like uh, he was more here, yeah. you know. So yeah, it's just yeah. anticipation, like you say, he's not even doing it yet, but just thinking exactly. about it, having to do it. It's like, you know, so it's yes. very cool. Like, so it, it already stimulates their their sympathetic nervous system, right? In this example or mine, and that's already mm -hmm. right. You're priming that system, like, oh, okay, we're going to do this thing. And mm -hmm. I mean, cold exposure can have a lot of benefits, right? But if we're purely talking sympathetic or like nervous system control it's really your ability to tolerate a type of stress right and you can modulate that intensity the frequency the duration right so it's not like i told them like now you're gonna stay in and you're not coming out it's like you just go in as long as you want right but it's just about that going in because a they have to work through the stress of going to do the thing and then they need to work through the stress of the actual physiological stress of the cold, right? Yeah. And that's that's where you see a lot of this, like, building the control, right? Because the yeah. only way to control all of that is actually through breathing. It's literally yeah. that simple, right? Because what do people do when they get cold, right? Or getting cold water? <gasps> it's just very sympathetic breathing, right? They, they, they go into that, like, hyperventilating mode. Um, so like teaching them how to control that right because we can go about like oh you know you should be breathing like this and like this um during you know normal stressful situations with your partner at work whatever but if you can train that in a very contrasted states right so with the cold water it, it it's like you have no other choice like mm -hmm. because right in the parasympathetic it's a lot of you're in your head you're not in your body but in the sympathetic, you're very much in your body, right? Like you don't have any other choice. And then it's like, okay, now I need to do something that puts me back down, right? That down regulates me, that gets me out of this like super um, yeah. excited state, right? Or aroused state um, using the, the, the terminology. So that that's a really good tool to get people to, well, first understand like, you know, um, how stress impacts their body right mm -hmm. because i also tell them like just pay attention to what you're thinking and how you're breathing right mm -hmm. and a lot of times like the thinking kind of cuts out when they get into the water and yes. it's just like that panic takeover right <laughs> yeah i feel like that that's one of the things about being um stress resistant uh, or mm -hmm. you know whatever term we use is that mm -hmm. You're, you're more able to actually just think, just think and yes. be there with yourself instead of, you know, instead of allowing the cold to kind of ah, overwhelm you and you're just like, ah, it's not really thinking anything, you know, you're just watching yourself, even if it overwhelms you, you're like, okay, yes, this is cold, you know, like that kind of thing. That's why I feel like I've developed so much more. And you, you talk about that, that moment before you go in, you know, mm. it's kind of, it's the po point of no return in a sense, you know, that. Yeah. And, if I go in, it's not like you say, I can't just drop the bar. Now, mm -hmm. now I'm cold, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the thing. And what I've noticed is um, that the, um, when that initial hmm, like trigger comes up, like should I mm -hmm. fight or flight in a sense, you know, mm -hmm. um, just uh, just don't feed, feed it as little as possible. Make a decision as fast as possible. That, that's yeah. the easiest thing I've noticed. That's what I usually, I had big time stage fright, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, it was back in the day. and. Uh, I always did this, that I was sitting before and I was just feeding this, feeding, mm -hmm. feeding, feeding, feeding. And now it's not that I don't get nervous ever, but I've noticed that if if I just, I just, okay, apparently I'm a little stressed right now. Mm -hmm. Just let it sit there. This really get any, so, yeah. yeah exactly.
So that's the, that's the one thing about the code. Uh, I feel like it can be used in kind of different ways. I, I most recently, for a while, I did my cold showers, you know, when my point was like, as quickly as possible, find the breathing and just stand. Yeah. Uh, but then I realized this didn't really have the effect I wanted in the morning sometimes. Like I got yeah. kind of relaxed from it, which mm -hmm. is a nice feeling, but I want to get going. So mm -hmm. recently I've actually done the exact opposite, that I, I embrace the panting. So I go in and I, yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. I, I like it, kind of wakes me up more. So what would your take on that be? Well, that's, I mean... Exactly as we talked about breath and the way it works, right? If you're breathing in a stress fashion, which is like close or like hyperventilation or close to it, right? Again, the spectrum there, then it will charge up the systems, right? So that's also why typically people use like Wim Hof breathing, which is very mm -hmm. sympathetic in its nature. It's, it's, it's controlled hyperventilation to wake up, right? Because it activates your, your sympathetic nervous system because you're offloading a lot of uh, carbon dioxide. Like why? It's, it's less important, but like your oxygen to carbon oxide, uh, dioxide saturation changes and that, you know, turns you on essentially, right? So th there's always this element, like you said, like if I want to uh, calm down, then I can e e even use cold, the cold shower to like, okay, right? Like, regulate my my nervous system but i can also deliberately upregulate it through the way i'm breathing right and you, you can do that with your breath at any given time really right if you get close to hyperventilation controlled then there's going to be like a sympathetic surge like that yeah yeah no very cool actually it's I started using the cold showers in different ways at different mm. times. So in the summer, when it was quite hot, this apartment gets quite hot. But also, mm. we, you know, we talked about the states that we might get into in a bit. But, uh, mm. you know, in the high states for me, I, I get too sympathetic in, mm. in a sense that it feels good. I have great energy. I almost feel like I'm on a slight like MDA trip or something. <laughs> but uh, the problem is when I come and it's time to sleep and I'm like, Oh, oh, you know, like that, you yeah, know. Uh, so I noticed that the cold shower, both for the actual heat, but it's yeah. actually like it cools me down on another yeah. level. If I then go in it and do the opposite, I actually find this yeah. deep, cool breathing. I come out cool, like quite literally, but also mm -hmm. actually nervous system wise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. You give like the way you breathe indicates to the nervous system, right, whether you're safe or not, right, whether there's mm -hmm. something to confront or not. So when you change that breathing pattern, right, that that, that definitely down-regulates the system, you know, typically, like in your case, right, to that degree that it's like, okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm coming down. So, yeah. 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 So, so I have a pretty cool thing, how I want to leave this next. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam gave me, when he visited me, this book, Dune, that I have <laughs> yeah. not gotten the chance to read as much as I'd like. I've read, like, uh, I don't know, uh, a bit into it, but really mm -hmm. like it's really just about the time. But there's an amazing, um, well, not quote, it's called The Litany Against Fear, that, mm -hmm. that is, yeah, it's in the book even before the book starts. So I wanted yeah. to read that to the audience, but I wanted... As it ties into the nervous system, I'd like mm -hmm. to hear your take on what this really means. So, yeah. the litany is fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. So, what does that mean uh, as it relates to the nervous system? Yeah, so you already pointed it out, right? That fear um, stimulates anxiety. It's sympathetic, but it's a um, it's a means to confront, right? So that that's where a lot of the, the sympathetic is in the end, right? Because if something happens in the environment, we turn on. It's like we need to. We have these different programs to deal with this threat, right? Fight, flight, and freeze. So the fear is there right a lot of people think it's like well it's there to keep you safe but not necessarily in like going to hide a, a big part of it is like we need to attack the thing that is you know that that it forms a quote unquote threat hmm? quickly it's i noticed like fight or flight i think yeah. because we don't have to fight all that much these days so it's hmm. it's more like take action or a flight right 
Yes. Yeah. It's the action of flight. Because flight would be an, a an action, right? Physiologically, yeah. it's like it would be running away. Um, and, and, and in this case, it, it's a so it, it's a prompt to action necessarily to to keep us safe, to keep us surviving. Um, and, and this is essentially what um, well exposure therapy is about, right? It's it's dealing with fear in the constructive fashion that it, instead of bringing you away from the thing, right, it's bringing you towards the thing, but it's being done in a way um, that that doesn't cross the threshold, right? So if you would want to face your fears, you don't start at the end, right? And this is what people like, oh, like, you know, like with asking these girls out, for instance, like you can start with very you know, minor things or basic things like start talking to a girl online, right? If that's the sure. threshold, right? Um, if, if you can't do that in person, but that's that's already like one step. Um, and I mean, the examples are, you know, like if you want to get over your fear of spiders, like you look at a picture of a spider, right? Mm -hmm. And then you do that for as long as you can tolerate until that like shutdown mechanism starts coming in. And then you just kind of keep repeating that and keep repeating that until in that phase, like you're good, right? And that's mm -hmm. kind of where, uh, like eventually you, you, you know, if we use the analogy of the spider, like you see the spider and everything is okay. And that's yeah. kind of where the quote comes from, like only I will remain, right? You yeah. kind of see that the fear goes through you, right? Kind of physiologically, it, it's true. It's kind of like you experience that, Right, the adrenaline and the cortisol go through the body, and once you get a hold of that, once you move through it, it those hormones abate, right? So they go away, and it's like, oh, I'm back, right? And that's why only I will remain because it's the 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 little death type thing is because we, as with the cold exposure, like you just stop thinking right all of the like it's just survival mode it's just reactive it's like you kind of cease to exist in a moment cognitively and everything is geared towards survival in a reactive fashion right where if you've gotten used to handling the fear constructively then you're still in the driver's seat <laughs> right yeah yeah no it, it's cool I, I noticed that fear is like the emotion that makes us um, the least of ourselves of all of them because of course we have different moods and that with the nervous system that we talk about with hormones and that but it's fear that really can you you can feel like you're a different person really um, yes so what would i how i interpret that quote is that you know, again it can be the right thing to be afraid if you if it's an actual threat here and you should get away or you should fight or whatever but yeah. we have, of course, from trauma, our childhood or other things in our lives, mm -hmm. we've gotten these triggers that don't really, you know, we feel the fear when we really shouldn't, when it really doesn't serve us. Mm -hmm. And again, it's like it's going against ourselves. Like in my case, with the stage fright, on the one hand, it was something I dreamt of. Love, I mm -hmm. know I have a talent for talking to people like this, but mm -hmm. I had the fear of being seen uh, for who I am. And mm -hmm. that if I show myself like this and can even show that I'm nervous, people would be like, oh, I didn't know he was like that. And they will abandon me. Because yeah. that's one of the biggest fears for humans, mm -hmm. right? To be being seen for who you are and rejected mm -hmm. for it, right? Yeah. And then, so when i was presented with those situations i felt mm -hmm. didn't feel like myself because i even if i was different back then i could be like confident and laugh and charismatic back then too but when i was in this situation i just turned to this little person that like yeah. you know I, i'm not even i don't have a personality i'm just scared you know so yeah. what, how i interpret it is that when you manage to push through like you said you can put it on lower levels um, but when you manage to push through it's like the nervous system is kind of like oh you, you, it just sense that this was unnecessary yeah. let's deprogram and what is then left yeah you yeah. So uh, thanks, Robert, for the, the comment, by the way, that you're enjoying this. Um, yeah, so why, why it makes us less us is, is a, a neurological thing, right? So your brain is made of, out of an, like an architecture of parts, right? It's, I'm oversimplifying things greatly, but you have like the neocortex. So it's like, think of like three mushrooms, like you have a little brainstem, there's like the limbic cortex on top and the neocortex on top of that. 
So the 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 brainstem is all about like survival. It's the, the literally the most basic thing in the the human brain, right? That we share with reptilians and any other basic life form that is alive, right? <laughs> that has a, a rudimentary nervous system because uh, it just regulates body temperature, breathing, etc. So what happens basically is like if if you think about it, like as a like again using kind of the mushroom example, but now the neocortex is doing this, right? It's contracting and fear, right? Because it, it has to do with survival. It's the highest, like, let's say, contractile thing. And a lot of the uh, personality and who we think we are is really, you know, more in the front here, right? So it's like squeezing everything down. And then it's like, I know, like, for a lot of people, it gives people existential angst. Like, no, you're still a person, but it's like <laughs> a lot of your personality is just, you know, like in the, 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 the prefrontal cortex alongside the, the limbic cortex, right? And like, it's, you're so, like, like I said, yeah, it's, it's more complicated than that, right? Because of all the interconnected things. But the more you move towards that, like, brainstem, the more, like I said, reactive and instinctive you become. The more animalistic, the more it's like whatever, you know, good things in your personality, like if you were in a situation like where your life depended on it, right? Whether it's uh, like a, somebody's threatening your life or something, like facets of you, like you're not going to write a love letter. You're not going to build a house. You're not going to write poetry, right? That's that's not what's going to happen, right? So that's why like this whole thing, like, yeah, you become way less of who you are because of fear because it's literally shrinking the capacity to be yourself when you're in a hyper reactive state right from the brainstem out so that's yeah it, it will determine a lot of like how you you know are able to quote unquote show up as yourself when the fear is there right and once you do right it's basically the signal to the nervous system like oh it's safe and you know instead of contracting everything expands again it's like oh you know so we kind of do that like you see that with people like when you're afraid what do you do right you contract right mm -hmm. when you're when you're not afraid you expand right because there's a lot of the viscera right in the gut here so underneath the ribs and the throat that's all um vulnerable tissue so when we're scared we tend to protect the most vulnerable thing so in fear right we're always trying to protect ourselves so it physiologically in the brain and in the body the same type of contracting and expanding happens right according to the signals that we uh, perceive from the environment <laughs> mm, that's so cool and so what one question um that we we've talked about it without necessarily talking about the nervous system just you and i before but it, we talk you know trauma that will give you different problems uh, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to deal with but we've also talked about how it can be sort of a superpower and this is we're talking mm -hmm. you know demons slaying demons or exactly. taming the demon mm -hmm. rather um but so yeah because it seems like almost all high performing people it's not almost no one i've heard a story like yeah everything was just sunshine and rainbows for me <laughs> growing up and, yeah. you know it was almost always something like this. So uh, I, I would guess, I guess my question is in a sense that do you think that your potential to uh, tolerate higher stress and stuff is higher if you went through a lot of stuff like that as you were growing up? Um, well, this is based on like if you were able to recover from it in several ways, right? So if there was yeah. a period... If you recover from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you recover from it, most definitely. Because there's people that kind of stay stuck in that because they never make their way to, you know, as we pointed out in the beginning, like better sleep, better nutrition, better lifestyle in general, right? Because they physiologically heal the, the nervous system and then psychological repair uh, kind of happens at the same time. But kind of come out of that uh so when that's the case right yeah most definitely and and some people just stay stuck in in that right unfortunately um because they're they're you know they they don't they never got those tools or the education to to deal with it so when that's the case right like typically the people that do go into high performance like a part of them has made it out right but their demons are still what is it like chasing them, right? Because a lot of it can be compensatory behavior. Oh, if I make this amount of money, if I'm the top performer, if I'm this, if I'm that, then I can finally be loved for who I am, right? Mm -hmm. go, go, go for who you are, right? For your achievement then, right? So it's another 
seeking a validation. So it's a, it's a, a little bit like psychologically, it's definitely a double-edged blade, but it, it does turn into a superpower once they've recovered from it and they tend to thrive in high stress scenarios. Right. So that's yeah. something that like we have in common. Right. So like uh, I, for me, like an anticipation anxiety is generally quite high when there's like something that is going to happen or I need to do, but anytime yeah. I'm performing it, it's like, okay, like it, it, that all goes away. Um, yeah. So I can give an example of that. That's more concrete. Um, I've been a Krav Maga instructor, right? So it's like the self-defense system of the, the Israelis. Um, and anytime, like you, you would test every so often, like just like you do in martial arts in general. And like I had high anticipation anxiety for the test, but whenever I was testing, I wasn't stressed. <laughs> no, 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 now you're just fun. doing the thing. So it was like, yeah, whatever. Like I, I know I'm prepared. Like I did the thing and now you're in the action. Right. So the anxiety comes from the action not being there. But as soon as you can act, right, again, like you use that anxiety, right, it becomes a superpower in that type of sense. Yeah, it, it's so funny that you say this, because it made me realize that that's when I had my problems back in the day, mm -hmm. it, it was it, it, it was stage, right? Very much. But mm -hmm. it's so funny because it's this idea in your head when you, when you know that okay now it's a performance i'm gonna mm -hmm. go up there, i'm gonna talk mm -hmm. about this mm -hmm. the anticipation anxiety was through the roof and that mm -hmm. back then i couldn't talk so then i still was kind of shit at it in the moment mm -hmm. too um but uh I, I realized that when when it just kind of happened somehow yeah, that I just was the center of attention like that, mm -hmm. then it worked really well, you know. Mm -hmm. And now it's like more. I get still some anticipation, anxiety for things, but mm -hmm. it's like I've learned both, both that I'm just physically. I think I've upgraded both hardware and software mm -hmm. there. But yeah. I also know how to go about it now. Like, but mm -hmm. it's gonna be fine in the moment anyway. Just don't feed it now, you know. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah, 100%. So that's, you know, like once you navigate that, right, that definitely becomes a superpower uh, because yeah. then you, you can channel that constructively, right? A, by not feeding it, but having increased your, your baseline and your threshold, right, where, where you are tolerant to the stress. And that's kind of, you know, as you pointed out in the beginning, where anti-fragility begins, right? Then you're no longer running away from the stressors or the anxiety or the stress of anything. It's just kind of you start using that constructively. Like, oh, I'm going to grow from this, right? At this point where I'm like, I'm going to go through this. And then as people sometimes tend to forget, you need to recover, right? And yeah. once you've recovered, it's like, okay, next time, it, like, it's not going to, this is not going to stress me out that much or not at all, right? And you kind of always increase that like baseline and the threshold where you, you know, go from, intolerance to tolerance yeah mm. yeah so it, it's funny because you also said which i also would propose but you know to to start with something like you know you, you're afraid of spiders even looking at a picture is much it will start there before you actually mm. have a spider right in front of you but the, the funny thing is i kind of did it the opposite way because i had no choice mm -hmm. and it's kind of, it's kind of what i've been trying to warn about on my channel uh, mm -hmm. all the time like, look, i managed to when I finally got panic attacks, that they were really, it was really the kind of anxiety and stress that I had experienced for a long time, just times a thousand uh, now, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people would not have been, like, it was so tempting to just lock myself away from the world and not confront mm -hmm. this at all. And mm -hmm. like months and months, that felt like years of fighting this. And I overcame it, uh, you know, but that's what I'm trying to tell people. Like, please learn from my mistakes before you end up in that spot because mm -hmm. not everyone is going to be able to do that. And I'm not like, oh, I'm so great. It's, I, mm -hmm. I see myself as lucky in a sense because it didn't feel like it was getting better. But <laughs> the point is, though, that now that it happened this way, uh, this made these panic attacks made anything, any situation like one of those situations that I used to dread, right? Mm -hmm. And so the funny thing is that going through this panic, uh, uh, you know, the, it was so, such intense stress mm -hmm. that yeah. it's like nothing that I used to be stressed about is, mm -hmm. is anything in comparison. It's like, how can I care about this? You know, I'm just happy I don't feel like dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so that's one of those things it's... Uh, if you go through like a, a super imposed, right? Because it's, it, I mean, quote, quote, comes, comes from outside of you, then 
and it forces you to, to, to confront that, right? And once you go through that, like he, it, it puts your baseline to a high level, right? Where it's like, okay, everything else since I've experienced this is like, whatever. So it, that's also like the adaptive nature of the nervous system is very interesting like that, right? So people that like, again, recovery is the main element, but once you've gone through it and recovered, it definitely increases your distress tolerance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm like shocked these days. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes when I am stressed and in stress mm -hmm. situations, when this we talked about that, because mm -hmm. this is the thing, it's, again, it's with anti-fragility, stress tolerance, uh, stoicism. None mm -hmm. of it is that, ah, you can just learn to just feel great when you're stressed. It's not that that's the point. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. But I'm like an example I know I told you about, but so th this um, summer I was mm -hmm. uh, on Gotland Island here in Sweden, vacation with family and friends. And so my, my um, cousin uh, has my little nephew. I, I say it's my nephew, even though she's my cousin, but mm -hmm. he's, um, he's like one and a half years old and he's running close to the bridge and the water all the time. And she's really looking at him all the time. But, and she's just turns around for a second and say, you should put something up. So mm -hmm. he doesn't fall in. And then I just see him go right down to the when it's stones and everything there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I get like shit, you know, we all run. She mm -hmm. just jumped in. It's kind of cool now after if I to see like the mother instinct. She just jumped in, didn't care about anything, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and he has a big cut here, the little mm -hmm. kid. You know? And th so this is like, you know, you realize what could happen here, all right? Mm -hmm. And I, I was I felt like this sympathetic nervous system uh, mm -hmm. start. But, I, I just noticed how extremely on top of things I were. And like, no, I see my cousin kind of freaking out and stuff. And I'm just mm -hmm. calm. Like, okay, what can I do? She has the kid. They, they have a, okay, it's it's a Saturday. Maybe the hospitals aren't all open. I'll go check this, you know, just immediately and just have a good pr thought process like that. And that's yeah, kind of yeah. what I want people to understand what it means with this. Yes. It's not that I oh, enjoy stress and it will feel nice. No, I still felt like pressure there. It's just that my ability to just kind of let it be there and still go about things as I would otherwise. Mm. Yeah, so that that's one of the things as well, like that people don't give stress enough credit for, like it makes you focused, right? Because when you're parasympathetic, it's like your, you know, your view, right? Psychologically is very wide. It's like, you can see all these different things. In stress, we get tunnel vision, and that's physically in the eye as well, where the blood vessels squeeze, uh, but it's also psychologically, right? And if you trend too far, right, then obviously, like, you don't see anything, and then it becomes a problem because you're so overwhelmed, focused, target fixated on the problem. But if you hit that spot where you are at, right, then it's a, it's a really good driver towards focus, where it's like, no, that's like, now I, I see this and I need to do that. And the, the chain of um, actions, right, becomes very clear in your mind. Like, oh, I need to do this. Now I need to do this. Now I need to do this. And it drives you forward. Technically, yes. that's why people use coffee, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is like, yeah, the caffeine is a cognitive enhancer, but it, it, it stimulates the adrenals in a way, right? So the, the, the coffee and the caffeine and everything together to kind of do this, Right, it hones in your focus in a very more singular, straightforward fashion. Right, and mm. that's through the nervous system that that happens. Right, so the, technically, most people are already leveraging stress in a beneficial way. They're just not aware. Right, and no, exactly. yeah. No, yeah, uh, it, it's that's uh, also the thing you want people to know that even when you say that, uh, but we're not talking about making stress just feel enjoyable. Mm -hmm. It's still that it, we tend to think of stress as something negative and, uh, you know, relax and recovery is something positive. And even just in everyday language, it makes mm -hmm. sense. But, you know, the stress, like an excited state is mm -hmm. also like a sympathetically stressed mm -hmm. state like that, right? And yeah. I, I've been, this, these are the things I kind of try to show people people lately because mm -hmm. I know in my content I can come off as just a very you know happy go lucky I just enjoy life and have fun but I'm still dealing I have anxiety sometimes you mm -hmm. know uh, and so I had some anxiety last week and I tried to really show people what I do uh, okay. to change and, and also I put like on the last day kind of before that kind of lifted off me mm -hmm. I, I put I started, uh, anxiety is one hell of a pre-workout you know because yeah, I, yeah. I was walking to, my, to the gym like 
like like this, you know, I, I'm both very focused on what I need to do now, mm -hmm. and uh, my body is just fucking ready to to fight, you know. So yeah. it, it's uh, when you leverage it right, like the stress is amazing too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, and that's like in like the communication um, at large, right? In general, we tend too far to either end of the spectrum. It's like oh, stress is super bad or stress is super good but it's like it depends where you're at right so yeah your beliefs matter but like it's it's always both it, there's always like it can be too much it can definitely be too much right especially on the things that you're sensitive to but it can also be way too little right and a lot like the people that are uh, more sedentary and stuff like that they're trending on that like it's too little right if you're not out there doing things or as high performers it's generally like you're too much like it's too much yeah. stress. Right? <laughs> you need to come down and these other guys need to come up right so that, yeah, that's it, definitely it, a it thing so with, with the high performance or a, even if we call ourselves that you know in the in mm -hmm. the high state you know that yeah. it can be too much of the positive stress because mm -hmm. we think too yeah. much stress we we often think of someone working a lot in Italy, so yeah, but it can even be like we know that you, when you visited me, we both mm. know that we're kind of too wired up, uh, but it's we're feeling good, you know. But it's kind of like yes. we sleep a little too little because mm. we just kind of can't. And so, what I personally try to do with I notice I am a person with you know, big, little bigger curve that you know, mm. with my downs the most, but I can still try to manage it. So, mm. it's something I really worked on lately that even when I feel good, just because mm. it feels good with that kind of stress doesn't mean that it is good too. So, yeah, yeah. definitely for me, that's the big mm. one. Try to just get parasympathetic every once yeah. in a while. Too. Yeah. yeah. Is as we've discussed, right? So even though, like, I know it's counterintuitive to a lot of people, like, oh, but you're feeling good, right? You're excited mm -hmm. and super high state and out there and doing all the things, but um, you're burning through a lot of your resources, right? And mm -hmm. when we constantly stay in that state, like, then it becomes like detrimental to our 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 physiology because we're we're just constantly like you you can't fill the the tank of the car fast enough and we keep burning our fuel right at a rapid pace because there's so much expenditure and that's mm -hmm. just like okay like it, it stress in or this type of state and the, the excitement is definitely a positive right and when we are aware of that like okay it's a positive to a certain degree Right, you know, we can consciously down regulate and make sure that, like, you know, like you would with your car, right? If the engine is running too hot or you see that the fuel gauge is getting lower, you stop the car, you go tank, right? You take a breather. So it is very, again, like where you trend on the spectrum as a person, so personality and bio individual state of the nervous system and neurology, it's like you kind of need to know yourself first, right? What type of person are you? What type of state are you in? And like how, like now, which way am I going to go, <laughs> right? Am I going to come up? Do I need to come down? Where where am I trending? So that as Theo said, like this curve, right, comes between tighter constraints. So I can easily more regulate here instead of like that. You need to run into a wall for the thousand time, right? Or that you never get out of the couch. And then it's like, okay, you're, you're going too far in either direction. Yeah. So I think one good thing to think about I uh, stress good or bad kind of thing is to realize that you, you can feel good and bad in a, both parasympathetic and sympathetic states. Like yes. the obvious example for me, I feel like the flip side to the fact that I can get quite anxious uh, at times is that I can also be very enthusiastic and energetic, uh, like yeah. excited like that. Yeah. And in the same way with parasympathetic, it can be a nice, just relax, you're feeling good just want to relax kind of state but it can mm. also be that completely depressed no drive whatsoever when you yes. wish you wanted to do stuff but you're just sitting there you know so yeah, yeah there's um you know, even in just your experience like that mm -hmm. you, you can feel good whether you're sympathetic or parasympathetic mm. exactly right so the the both branches of the nervous system as you said like have that spectrum right and like just like with everything you else see, do you see this thing at the top of the screen what do I see at the top of the screen? I have some kind of countdown on my phone and I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. But it's probably that we're running towards the end of like how long the life can last. Can it just last an hour? Because then it's going to go out uh, in any second here. So, 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I think we're not going to go on for too much longer, but I just didn't want it to end like that, you know. Um, that, where, where were you? So I was saying that the um, both sides of the nervous system exist on a spectrum. And like mm. with everything else having a spectrum, it's kind of about the Goldilocks zone, right? So it's like the ratios, not just between the nervous system branches, but also between like or in in each spectrum in and of itself, right? So it, and it, everything kind of falls that mm -hmm. curve. So if you fall in the right piece of the curve, that Goldilocks zone, right, then everything feels great, whether I'm sympathetic or parasympathetic. And that's kind of like... Mm -hmm. What where we kind of want to lead people to like think about like it's it's not good or bad either one right sympathetic mm. or parasympathetic it it really I mean it does matter but it, the value judgment doesn't make sense it's just like mm. how is this one showing up or how am I feeling in one of these am I in that zone where am I right so it exactly. becomes kind of like um, I would use the word like a compass, right? So a compass for where you're trending on the either side and in which part of the spectrum you are on the either side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's funny, Goldilocks. It's funny because we talked just before this um, mm -hmm. live about the mm -hmm. golden path, right? <laughs> it, it comes back with everything. I noticed this mm -hmm. in life. There's a duality of everything. You mm -hmm. know, if I have a shirt, that you see the outside, there's always an inside kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know? And yeah, it doesn't make sense with a shirt example, but you mm -hmm. want to be at the, that golden average all the time, mm -hmm. right? So it goes mm -hmm. for the nervous systems as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's effectively when we think about like balance, um, you know, it, it's a loaded term because a lot of people make balance out to be like it's 50-50. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's technically correct, right? But it's also context dependent where it's like, if you're in a in a um, like super high state, then the balance is more like I'm eighty percent going after it and twenty percent mm. resting because now that allows for it, right? Mm. For instance, like the ratios are are made up, right? They're arbitrary, but yeah. in in the other sense, like now because it's it's like a series of sprints, right? If we think about ratios, like you're sprinting for ten seconds, but you're resting for ten minutes, mm. right? But nobody's mm. going to tell you to sprint slower in order to <laughs> maintain balance. Like that doesn't make any sense, right? Exactly. I still want to go full speed and, and I just want to properly recover after, right? And this yeah, is yeah. what I mean with like a, the asymmetry in balance. So it, finding a balance is really about where I am on the spectrum in these ratios and, mm. you know, my value individual state and the environment or the situation that I'm in. And then finding balance in that. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. like if, we, if it's time to go like the again with the, like another example, if I'm a Formula One driver and the greens go, the, the lights go green, I'm not going to, you know, go like at a moderate speed, a balanced speed. <laughs> right. So I'm going to I'm going to go as fast as I can. It's time to do yeah, the yeah. thing. Right. So balancing it's that sense, like I said, it, it, it's a myth that it needs to be 50 50. It just needs to be balanced out enough. So that I, I I don't trend too far on one thing, right? Yeah. If the, the Formula One driver never uses his braking pedal, is gonna drive into a wall, right? Mm, and that exactly. that's finding the balance in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like about balance, just think about it. When you have to actually balance, it's it's uh, a lot of just. Um, you know, finding the position where you, you are balanced and grounded, right? And, you know, if we take some made-up example of something you're standing on, if it's uneven, it's not mm -hmm. going to be in the middle. You stand it somewhere to the side, right? And that's yeah. where you're balanced. And then maybe exactly. something like the nervous system, maybe we would say, like, at the end of your life, maybe you should have spent 50-50 in each, you know. Uh, but <laughs> in, in the given a certain circumstance, the balance mm -hmm. is going to look very different, right? Exactly. And that's just kind of something to to take with you, right? Like it, it's balancing these things out. And that requires a high uh, self-awareness, high self-understanding, high sensitivity, right? It, it requires a lot of like going, as we would say, like inwards, like sitting with these feelings and like kind of, okay, mm. you know, getting, looking at your compass, essentially. If you never look at the compass, you don't know which your direction you're going, right? You might mm. feel it, but you're, you know, 
uh, might not listen to those feelings. So coming back to that is essential in order to create this type of balance. Yeah, hundred percent. So I, I'm sure we could talk about more things, but I think for the purposes of this slide, I, I feel like we talked about the things I wanted. It was just a little unfortunate that we had to add like six minutes here on a separate uh, live. But <laughs> yeah. I guess what, what I'd like to say, uh, just in conclusion, to people watching this, is like, see, see, see this for what it is. Like, l listen to what we said, and that should mean both that you challenge yourself in different ways that stresses you, and raise your threshold that way so you can tolerate stress better but mm -hmm. on the, the flip side also that when you're running high and feeling good uh, maybe take a little extra time to actually recover sometimes and find the balance yeah 100 <laughs> yeah is there anything you'd like to say add at the end no like you you summed it up pretty neatly <laughs> Yeah, awesome, man. Well, as as always, a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure we will be talking later today as well. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Are you hit, hitting the gym? Uh, yeah, I'm going to train in, in a little while. I'm going to train at a different place today. So we're, hmm. we're going to drive there and then I'm, I'm going to do like a pushing workout. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. Me too. Oh, I see Pontus. Ja, har det bra Pontus, kul, jättekul att du tittade. Uh, yeah man, I have a push workout as well. Uh, I'm gonna study a bit of Greek here and then I'm gonna go hit it. So, right. well, um, yeah, let's end it here. Thank you for today, Sim. Yeah. And um, yeah. thanks for having Thank me on, bro. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later, man. Yeah. Peace. Peace. <laughs>